<laughs> well, sometimes that happens, and sometimes it doesn't. I think LSU, it didn't happen yet. <laughs> But it, but, but it can happen. I mean, the whole message today is going to be about the, the, the process of pain can lead to promotion. But first of all, I want to celebrate everybody that brought shoe boxes. Man, we had a goal of 300, and we ended up with 450 shoe boxes. Amen. I mean, that Alexander Campus, God bless y'all. Y'all had 116. We, we welcome y'all. And at Daryl and Beverly's anniversary, I hope they're having a good time. So we thank you, Alexander Campus. Pineville, y'all had 334. They said each box has the potential of reaching nine people. That would be 4,050 people. Amen. With that in mind, now let, let's remember Mary Dean. I mean, she kind of headed that up, and her mother's in the hospital right now, so lift her up, and she do. Well, listen, I, I want to talk about the whole message today, the whole series. I'm going to tell you, I, I can tell you I'm so excited I could almost stand up and fly. <laughs> I am, because we're, we're going to be learning about a process. And when you learn this process, it applies to every area of your life, your marriage, your finance, everything. When, when you don't learn this process, you, so many people live a, a defeated and, and discouraged life. But we want the last half of your life, wherever you're at, to be the best part of your life. Pain is part of the process before the promotion. I want you to learn two things. That's one of them. Disappointment is part of the process of developing. If you really learn those two things, when, when the first time when, when pain comes, you said, hey, man, God's processing me, and if I process the right way, if I develop the right way, God, God will promote me or get to where he wants you to be. And when you get disappointed, if you understand it's a process of developing because God's more concerned about your character than he is your comfort, and sometimes he'll make you uncomfortable to build your character. There's verses like Philippians 2.14 that God's working in you, Giving you the desired power to do what, he, what pleases him. God said, I'm working in your life. If you're here today, I'm telling you, God is working in your life. He tells in Isaiah that he is the potter, that we're the clay. In Jeremiah, he says, I'm in your hands and I'm in the potter's hands. In, in Romans 9, 21, it says, does, does not the potter have the power over the clay? He has the power. But Galatians 6, 5 says, every man's going to have to bear his own burdens. Every man, woman, boy, you're going to have to bear your own burden. In other words, what I wish is I could let somebody else develop and go through the process, the hurt and the pains, and I could still come out on the other end, but it doesn't work that way. I, I wish your parents, I wish your parents, I wish our kids didn't have to bear their own burdens to be developed to what God wants them to do. But, but, but it doesn't. It's an individual thing. Your husband has to develop. Your wife has to develop. You have to learn to to. Bear your own burdens. So with that, let me, let me start us out with prayer, okay? But God, I pray today for our, our church. I pray for your power, your presence. I pray that you would remove burdens and destroy yokes. I pray that uh, Satan, you know, he's defeated. We're redeemed. Jesus Christ is the Lord. I pray for Mary Dean's mother and her. I, I pray for Latina that's in the hospital out of town, that you'd give her strength. It's in Christ's name I pray. Amen. All right, let's go through how, how the process to have the last half to be your best half. Most of us are never prepared for what we're, we're going to really go through. You, you, I don't even think you can compare yourself if you want to, but you have to understand the process if you're ever going to get to the promotion. There, there's Proverbs 21, 31. It says, you know, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead and be prepared the best you can for the conflict, but victory comes from God. In other words, you're going to have conflict. Conflict, listen, is part of the process of developing me and you. Conflict handled correctly can lead to intimacy. So, so I'm telling you, you're going to have conflict. You're going to have it in your marriage. You're going to have it on your job. You're going to have it at church. You're going to have conflict. But it says be prepared for it. How do you prepare for it? You arrange your life in a way that you can learn the most about what you want to do. In other words, you want to have a, a great marriage one day, you, you don't just talk about it you you learn about it you you try to live it out and see what god's word has to say about it. if you want to have better job you say we don't do our own job to be promoted if you want to have better finance he says be prepared see the key to going to have a, a better life is to learn the process but you can be as prepared as you want but he said remember victory comes from god there's an important insight if you don't understand the process you allow disappointments to defeat you instead of develop you. 
one of the biggest things you can learn today is that. It, 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 when you don't understand the process of life, when you don't understand how you process before you're promoted, you allow your disappointments to defeat you instead of develop you, and that's why so many people continue to live in a, a defeated life instead of a victorious life. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's the same thing, marriage, finance, health. It's lack of understanding the process to the promotion. When I say promotion, I'm talking about getting to where God wants you to have. When I'm talking about promotion, to have the marriage that God wants you to have. When I'm talking about promotion, to have the peace and love and joy that God wants you to have. See, earthly preparation apart from godly preparation will never give you the promotion that you're looking for. It takes both. I want your last half to be the best half. I'm going to give you four quick P's, but we're only going to focus on one. Have a prepared heart. Ar arrange your life for the process. In other words, arrange your life. Learn all you can. Have a praying heart. It really means let God, you and God, you line up what God has for you. God's not Santa Claus. In other words, one of the biggest parts of prayer is we get God's will in a matter, not ours. Have a persistent heart. I mean, those people that don't give up, man, I tell you, they end up going across the finish line. But we're going to study today about a processing heart, which I, I don't really think it's ever been taught. I don't think people even understand it. And the, the heart that understands the process, you may not enjoy the process, but if you understand the process, it helps you get through. See, when you fully understand the process, look, you're ready, you can almost predict your future. You, 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 you go to Matthew 7 and read that whole chapter. I'm not going to go through it, but Jesus said... Uh, the rain's going to come, the flood's going to come, and the wind's going to come. But the person hear my word and does my word, he built his house on the rock, and he's going to stand. The other person that heard the word, but they didn't do anything, the same wind, the same rain, the same came, and it fell. So you can predict your life when you understand the process of the rain and the flood and the winds. But understand, the greater the dream, the greater the test, the greater the process. In other words, you, you, you say, man, I want God to use me. Well, make sure, make sure you understand the greater the process. The greater the dream, the greater the development process. He has to develop you to get there. Uh, how, how we develop will greatly determine our destiny. You ready? What most of us call disappointment is most oftentimes of development. I, I don't know a lot about football, but I know there were some LSU people. They were disappointed. Now, LSU could continue to be disappointed and live a defeated life and, or keep being defeated. Or they'll say, man, we're going to develop like crazy, and they'll come back as winners. The same thing as life. So when you don't understand disappointment to development, we'll continue to go through the same disappointments and live a defeated life. So when you, you don't understand the God doesn't necessarily bring the disappointments and the failures in life, but because they're in your life, he wants to develop them. And when you don't develop, you'll keep going through the same thing, same thing over and over again, and you'll just live a, a discouraged, defeated life. I, I want you to understand the process that leads to promotion. I'm going to give you an example today. I'm gonna give, what, the example we're going to look at is Joseph. And I'm not going to talk about Joseph's childhood because Joseph is one of the most dysfunctional families you'll ever find in the Bible. Can I tell you my family's dysfunctional? My name is James. I live in a dysfunctional family. Did you know our new series is how to live in a dysfunctional family? Do you know next Sunday we start preaching about dysfunctional families? What I can't find out, though, everybody in the whole Bible is dysfunctional. I, I'm going to preach on how to lessen the dysfunction in your life because you got it. Everybody, you got it in your marriage, you got it with your kids, and we're just, we're just dysfunctional people. Next Sunday, we're going to be talking about dysfunctional families. But Joseph was so dysfunctional. In Genesis 20, uh, 37, 18, it starts saying, Now when they saw him afar off, who did they see? His brother saw Joseph even before he came near to them. He said, man, let's conspire to kill him. Well, that's a great brotherly love. Amen? And they said one to another, look, at man, it's the dreamer. He's coming again. What did they call him? A dreamer? What upset them? Him dreaming? See, Joseph was a big dreamer. Even at a young age, he was saying, man, I think God's going to use me. I'm going to be a great leader one day. The problem is he would go back and tell his brothers. 
And, and in the dream, I'll, I'll read it to you, but in the dream, his brothers were bowing down and, and they were serving him. And he said, man, I want to tell you a dream again. I want to tell you a dream again. By now, his brothers are ticked off at him. See, not everybody in your family is excited about you being successful. So what you got to be careful, if you've got big dreams, you better be careful who you share them with and when. The greater the dream, the greater the development process. See, I want you to know, but when Joseph was finally promoted, he was probably in his early 30s. That means he was processed for at least 15 years before he was ready to get the promotion God had for him. The longer it takes to develop, the longer it'll take you have to go through the process. See, I believe God gives everybody great dreams. I, I really do. Many times you don't know why God gave them to you. You don't realize that God gave them to you to be used for God's purpose and not just your personal purpose. See, God was a very creative God. I mean, God was so creative. I mean, he created the heavens, the earth, the stars. He was creative. We were created in God's image. You have a creative side for you. Your creativity gives you dreams, especially when you're young. You start dreaming what you're going to do, what God might use you. Now, what can happen over time, the pressures can squeeze the dream out of you. See, see, but if we learn the process and we live out the process and we don't give up on the process, we'll be pr promoted and used by God. What I want to do today is try to get through the process. I, I'm going to use Joseph as an example of the process and the stages that he went through and that you're going to go through in life. And if you can learn the stages, maybe when you're disappointed, you'll say, maybe let God develop me. When pain comes, just say it's part of the process. Joseph knew what it's like. See, at a young age, the first thing that, that Joseph did, he had big dreams. And everybody has big dreams. But many times before the dreams come about, they're later in life. I mean, Jesus at 12, he was at the temple. He was teaching and preaching. His mother said, where have you been? What are you doing? He said, man, I'm about my father's business. She said, come on. He had to go home, and it says, or later on it says, and he grew in stature and wisdom and knowledge. He's, he began to be developed. So he had dreams. In, in Genesis 37, 5, it said, Joseph had a dream. And, and he told his brothers, and they hated him. Wow. Can I tell you, sometimes when people hate you, don't just keep going back and going back and going back and going back and going back. There's some people you've got to learn to love at a distance. Amen. But they hated him, they hated him more because he shared the dream. And they said, please hear our dream, which we have dreamed. In other words, he said, man, I got, I got another dream. And, and he said, listen, this is what it is. They were, they were binding sheaves in, in the field, and behold, mine stood up and arose. Also, yours stood up. Indeed, yours stood up too around, but they bowed down to me. In other words, I said, I had this dream that I, we both stood up, but y'all came before me, and y'all bowed down. And Joseph think this is a great dream. I don't think his brothers are so excited. His brother said, shall we, shall you going to reign over us? Shall we indeed have dominion over us? They hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. He had big dreams, but they weren't so excited, were they? And they weren't as excited as they, they should have been. Listen, God gives everybody a dream. And when he talks about to have dominion over there, God said, when, when you were created, I created you, I blessed you, I blessed you to be fruitful, I blessed you to, be, to multiply, and I blessed you to have dominion over whatever comes into your life. God gives you that dream. You may not be living it out, you may not be enjoying it, but God has given you a dream. What is the first process that God gives you a dream? The second process is where we usually lose everybody. It's total devastation. If you live long enough, your dreams are going to be shattered. If you live long enough, you're going to be totally devastated. When you, when you don't understand the devastation, it destroys you. I, I, I've been so devastated at times, I, didn't think, I just felt I couldn't walk through it. I had to crawl through it. I, I felt like it was a dream. It was so bad. But you're going to have it too. And most of you already have had it. See, what happened in Genesis 37, 18, now when they saw the brother afar off, that, 
before I even came near, they conspired to what? Kill him? And man, look, here comes the dreamer. But that's great. I mean, my brother said, here I come. I, I want to kill you. Verse 20, it goes on and it says, hey, come therefore, let us kill him. Cast him into a, some pit, and we shall say, the wild beast destroyed him, and we shall, uh, what will come of the dreamer then? In other words, he said, that we got a plot. Remember, though, this. It doesn't matter what you're going through if you're serving God. At the end, God before you, it doesn't matter who's against you, you'll win. It's gonna, you're going to come out. But, but see, that, they were trying to destroy. In fact, and, and I'm gonna just, it's so long, I'm going to get bits and pieces. In 37, 23, it says, they stripped him of his tourniquet. At 30, 24, it says they cast him in a pit. Listen to this. It was empty and had no water. Guess what it says in verse 25? Put it up if you can. In Genesis 37, 25, they cast him in the water. They cast him in the pit. They, they did it. They went and sat down and ate. Can you imagine? We're going to kill our brother. We, we stripped him. Basically, we beat him. We, we threw him in there. And, and now let's just sit down and eat. Let me tell you, that's becoming hard hearted. Amen. But they lifted up their eyes, <laughs> and they looked, and they saw a, a company coming, the Ishmaelites, and they, they were coming, and, and they said, listen, and they're camels, and they were bringing spices and riches, and they were going to go to Egypt. And, and you know what they said? Verse, verse 26, they said, man, <laughs> hey, what does it profit us to kill our brother and conceal the blood? Let, let's, no, let's, let's do something else with him. And so what did they do? And say, okay, come, let, let's sell him to the Ishmaelites and, 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 and our hand be upon him for, for he is our brother and he's our own flesh. Now they said, we're going to kill him. Why should we kill him? The only reason they didn't kill him because they figured out how to make money. So, so they sold him into slavery to, the, to be going to Egyptian. Can I tell you something? That's pretty devastation. That's total devastation. Your total devastation has to lead to total dependence upon God. I, I, was, I was actually at a seminar personally with Charles Stanley one time, and it was a very small group, smaller than this. And he said, you know, I never really knew if I was going to depend on God until I lost everything I had. And I had nobody else to depend on. I've been there. I understand what that means now. I didn't at the time, but I do now. Total devastation better leads you to total dependence on God. Total dependence on God will lead you to the right process and begin to develop us so one day we can be used by God. When, when we don't know or we don't learn the process, it leads to defeat instead of development. When we don't allow disappointments to develop us, we'll continue to go through the same disappointments again and live a defeated life. I've seen it with people with finances. I've seen it with marriages. I've seen it with church. In, in marriage, they get married about 18 months later. They say, we just fell out of love. And I tell you, you don't fall out of love. You fall out of cars. And the only way you fall out of cars is open a door when you're running. And that's stupid. <laughs> so they get out of that. And it, they're devastated. It wasn't what I thought it was. So they get into another one. Same thing. Financial, I've seen people do it over and over again. And I, I've seen people do it in church. I came to church and I just can't believe that pastor acted like that. I can't believe he did that. I can't believe somebody didn't say said something like that to me. So they're devastated and, and, and they don't learn the process. I don't want anybody in our church to live a defeated, discouraged life. Hey, do, do you understand when the Bible says when in marriage, if you're married, when the two become one? I mean, you're growing up, so the two become one. That is so great. We become one flesh. I mean, and everybody says that, that must mean simply when we have sex. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. It means way more than that. It means you have to go through the long, tough, painful process. Hurts, forgiveness, sorrows. And through the process, you begin to develop. And God teaches you what love really is. And when you finally get to that point, there's nothing like it in the world. But you didn't just wake up. Let me tell you what, the greatest time when you were on your honeymoon, you thought, oh, yeah, that is not going to last. You're going to be processed. And if you go through the process as a married couple the correct way, it's the greatest thing in the world. But you got to understand all the hell you go through before the two become one, or you'll give up. Then he was promoted again. He, he had a great dream. He was devastated, and you begin to prosper, and you begin to dream again. And in Genesis 39, verse 1, and when Joseph was taken to Egypt by the, the Ishmaelites, uh, the traders, and he was purchased. He, 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 you know what he was purchased by? Potiphar, 
Remember Potiphar, he, he was a high officer, but he wasn't the king. He, he was an Egyptian officer. Pot, Potiphar, he was the captain of the guards of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. All right, verse 2, if you got it, put it there. And the Lord was with Joseph. He had just been thrown into the pit. He had just been purchased by the, the, the uh, Egyptians. And in Genesis 20, 39, verse 2, all this going on, and he said, and the Lord was with Joseph, so he succeeded in everything he did. How in the world could that be? Because I'm telling you, when Joseph was thrown in the pit, when he, he was so, he said, I'm my total dependence upon God. And God said, I'm going to be with you, Joseph. I'm going to cause you to succeed. Who causes success in our life? God does. Who was Joseph dependent on? God. In verse 3, and, and Potiphar noticed, he realized that the Lord was with Joseph, giving him success at everything he did. You ready? You can work for the most ungodly people in the world, and God can still use you to bring about success. There, there's ungodly companies that don't even realize the reason they're successful is because of people working for them. And that's what they did there. So listen, here's the process. He had this big dream. He was totally devastated. Now he's, he's starting to prosper again. Comes another great disappointment. Another devastation. Jo jo Joseph was allowed to be disappointed, but it allows him to to devastate him but it allows God to to develop him hey get to Genesis 39 6 you ready now Potiphar gave Joseph a complete responsibility over everything he owned uh, with Joseph there he didn't worry about a thing except for kind of food to eat and Joseph Joseph was a what kind of man handsome well built good looking dude can I tell y'all something the people, men and women that are really good looking and really handsome, they go through temptations that I never knew about. <laughs> it's true. So many people want what they have and they don't realize sometimes the looks are a curse instead of a blessing. So, so, so if you know somebody or if you know a young person and, and, and pray for them and encourage them, don't depend upon that, but to develop who they are. And Potiphar's wife, you know, she, she began to be lustful. And she'd say, you know, come and sleep with me. <laughs> she even demanded it. She, she was in charge. And here's this good-looking guy. He, he, he'd been thrown into prison, I mean, thrown into pit. Now he's sold into slavery. Now he gets promoted. Now he's in the house, and, and he's in Potiphar's house. And, he, and Potiphar said, you can do anything. Don't tell my wife, but you can do anything else. And she comes in. She said, man, why, why don't you sleep with me? And Joseph refused. He, he told him, man, your master trusted me with everything in your entire household. No one here has more authority than, than I do. And, and, and he held nothing back from me except you because you're his wife. How can I do such a wicked thing? Listen, it would be a great sin against God. This is so important. The reason that Joseph didn't sleep with Potiphar's wife was not necessarily because he didn't want to. It's because he didn't want to sin against God. You ready? Part of the development process before God will really use you is knowing that you come to the point that God can trust you when nobody's looking. Ooh, say that is good, Brother James. Can God trust you on your job when nobody's looking? Oh. Can your mate trust you no matter where you're at and what you're doing when she's not there? See, because God's more concerned about building your character than he is your comfort. If you, if you can't be trusted, you had not been developed yet to where God wants you. Part of love is trust. And, and nobody was looking but God. And Joseph said, man, I'm not going to sleep with you. If you can't be trusted... When no one's looking, you hadn't gone through the development process correctly. Verse 10, she kept putting pressure on him, Joseph, day after day after day. But he refused to sleep with her, and he kept her out of way as much as possible. Kept out of her way. Right, did y'all hear that? 
he didn't keep going where she was. At most possible, he, he was trying to avoid her when he could. But one day, however, no one else was around. When he went in to work at the house, guess what happened? She came and grabbed him and grabbed his cloak and demanded, you better come sleep with me. And Joseph tore himself away, but he left his cloak in her hands and ran free. Sometimes, dude, you better just run. Amen? You know when somebody like that after you, just run. 1 Corinthians 8, uh, 6, 8, 8, flee fornication. 2 Timothy 2, 20, flee useful love. Hey, give me, give me some ideas, guys. Sometimes the best thing to do is run. Amen? But you know what? When she saw that he was holding, uh, that she was holding his cloak and he fled, it ticked her off. Uh, she called the servants. And he said, soon all the men, they came rushing in and and she said, my husband has brought this Hebrew slave, brought him into our daggum home. He fooled us. He came into my room, and he tried to rape me, and so I screamed. That isn't really what happened. But that's what she said. So what she did then is she summons everybody in and told them what happened. Verse 19, her husband finds out. How does he find out? She went and told him. Isn't that something? Potter, he was furious when he heard it. I mean, I mean, he heard his wife's story and that Joseph, the way she had treated him. So he took Joseph and he threw him into prison. Isn't that great? Joseph didn't sleep with his wife. He tried to do his right. He ran from her. The wife lied about him. Where does Joseph go? So praise God. No, he, he gets thrown in prison. Can I tell you, a lot of times you can do what's right and still get in pain. A lot of times people lie about you and you're doing what you're supposed to do. Don't worry. If Joseph did it, they did it with Jesus. They're going to do it to you. Verse 21 says, though, the Lord was with Joseph. Do y'all understand that the Lord was just Joseph? He was with Joseph when he sold him into slavery. He was with Joseph when he was in the palace. He was just Joseph now that he's in the prison. I mean, God was with Joseph, and God is with you. Uh, see, the Lord said, I'm with you when you're in the prison. I'm with you when you're in the palace. See, e even during the disappointment, Joseph knew God was with him. Even when she lied about him, even when he had to go to jail. See, Joseph, listen, this is real important. Joseph learned the difference between being disappointed in a person and not being disappointed in God. Oh, that's good too. Do you know the difference between being disappointed in people and being disappointed? Have y'all ever known people, I'm not going back to church because of Brother James. No, I'm not going back to church because of such and such happened. I'm not going to church because all those hypocrites, and you know, they're one too, but you know, I'm not going back to church. So they haven't learned the difference between disappointed in people, but never be disappointed in God. Part of the developed process and learning uh, when people disappoint you, uh, God is still with you. 1 Corinthians 2 5 said, My faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but the power of God. People are going to disappoint you. Your mate's going to disappoint you. I'm going to disappoint you. But listen, your power's not in me. It's not in them. Your power needs to be in the power and presence of God. Part of the process is learning. Listen, people are going to disappoint me. Many times what we call disappointments is nothing more than God allowing us to be processed and develop and depend upon him. Right, Kevin? Kevin? Raise your hand. Kevin? Raise your hand. Stand up. Now raise your hand. Sit down. <laughs> Kevin learned the process. When Kevin lost his job, he wasn't doing anything. They lost a bunch of them. They brought in new men, he, he, and he got let all, let go. At the, pro, at the time, he, he was processing alcohol. Now, I know what it's like to have a drink, but you drank, dude. I don't drink a gallon of whiskey a day. But I mean, he, he was processing. That alcohol was processing him. But instead, of, of the, the disappointment drove him to totally depend upon Jesus Christ. I was there. I saw him invite Jesus Christ into his life. I can remember when he came to the office. He said, I've had it. I'm disappointed. I'm at the end of my life. I'm going to change my life. He changed his life, and he radically changed. Amen. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure, though, if you'd have kept your job, you'd have got to go through the process. Now, I don't have the faith he did. I can remember he said, listen, I lost a job, but God's going to provide. I said, holy Moses, dude. I wanted to say, yeah, I know that verse. <laughs> but he was serious. You understand the process? Otherwise, you live a defeated, discouraged life. He could have got up and said, man, I can't believe it. I was working hard, and, and you know, I, 
I, I, I, they just let me go for no reason. I've been there for 20 years or however long it's been, you know, and you think I drank one gallon of whiskey, now I'm going to drink two. Mm -mm. He allowed the process to work. You, you're going to go through it in marriage. You're going to be so devastated sometimes, so disappointed. God's just developing you for something greater. So anyway, I got, I got a rock here. I'm like, dead gun. <laughs> let, let, let me just tell you the story because we don't have time, but I, I want to encourage you to read Genesis 38 through 41. He got thrown into jail. And <laughs> guess who was with him in jail? And the Lord was with him and caused everything he did to be successful. God can cause you to succeed wherever you're at and whoever you're working for. He's in charge. Got thrown in jail. Guess what? He started getting promoted again. Uh, two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. And nobody could interpret his dream. Y'all ready? Stop. What got Joseph in trouble in the first place? Dreaming. <laughs> Guess what's fixing to get him out of it? Interpreting dreams. You don't tell me God can't turn it around to, uh, uh, and just change uh, what you got in trouble with and turn it around to something great. But anyway, he, he fell asleep and Pharaoh had another dream and nobody could tell him. Joseph responded to Pharaoh. He said, I can tell you in advance. I can tell you what the dreams are. It means seven years you, you're going to have prosperity and let's store it up and let's get ready. In seven years you're going to have famine. But, but Pharaoh, you're the king. You're over Potiphar who threw me in jail. You know what he says, man, can anybody else do this? No. He said, listen, he knows the meaning of the dream. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to promote him. And it sums it up and it says, you're going to be in charge of my court. And all the people are going to take orders from you, Joseph. As I sit on the throne, there's no other higher rank than me. Joseph, in other words, I want you to know you, you got promoted. You're the second most powerful person in Egypt. Joseph probably was the second most powerful person in the world. Dreams got him into trouble. Dreams got him out. How would you like to know if the process worked? How, how would you like to know wherever you're at in life, the process, the pain, the disappointments, how, how would you like to know if you're being developed where God can really use you now? I can tell you how. The same people that hurt him, his brothers, they were starving. Guess where they had to come? They had to come to Egypt. Guess who was in charge of the food? Their brother. And they became fearful, and they said, man, he's going to pay us back. Please forgive us, they said, you know, because we wronged you. And Joseph broke down and wept. And they threw themselves, they said, we're your slaves. Oh, they got that right. They told them that 15, 20 years ago. But Joseph replied, don't, don't be afraid of me. I'm not God. I'm not going to punish you. He said, what you intended to harm me, God intended for my good. He said, God brought me to this very place, this very position, so I could save the lives of many. It, it says, but for you, you meant it for my harm. A lot of people mean stuff for your harm. God meant it for my good. I developed through it all in order to bring me to this day where I can save many lives. That's what God's bringing you to where God can use you, where other people can go to know him as their personal Savior. How do you know the development process is working? That you can forgive the people that hurt you the most. Not, not only you can forgive them, you, you almost feel sorry for them. Can you imagine, dude, if my brothers came in there and they had thrown me in the pit and they sold me into slavery and I was in charge, I'd probably say, starve your butt off. Say, what do you think about my dreams now? No, not him. He processed. He cried, wept, hugged him, loved him, provided for him, and let him live there with him. That's what the process does. In closing, let me give you a few insights. I pray that you'd come this morning and you'd put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. Would you come and become totally dependent on God to care for you and not somebody else where he can develop you? Would you forgive anybody and everybody that ever hurt you would you allow your hurts and disappointments to turn, allow you to turn to God where God can develop you and use you? Would you allow God to bless you no matter where you're at? He was successful when he was in Potiphar's house. He was successful when he was in jail. And he was successful when Pharaoh promoted him. To be successful, you've got to be blessable wherever you're at. He let God have the process. He saw that God was in charge. God could trust him. 
so God can bless him. Can, can God trust you? Can others trust you? Is it time that you start turning to God and you say, God, I, I want to be trusted? And, and, and when God does promote you, can you remember it came from God and give him the honor and glory? I, I've never seen a time in history when people get promoted, sometimes it's the worst thing that ever happened. They forget where it came from, and they'll eventually lose a promotion. Maybe you're here today and you're really disappointed. You really feel discouraged. Jesus says for you to come unto him, all that labor and heavy laden, and he wants you to find rest this morning. Would you stand? Let me pray with you and pray for you. God, you're such an awesome God. Boy, you have a process for our life. So many times what we call hurts and sorrows and disappointments are nothing more than you trying to develop us to where you can use us in a great way. God, I pray for everybody here this morning, God, that you would touch their hearts, that they would see that you're with them, that you're developing them, you want to use them. For those that don't know Christ, that they'd come. For those that have never been publicly baptized. For those that are hurting. Whatever God's called you. Maybe you need to pray with somebody and pray and have somebody pray. Whatever God's called you to do, I pray you do it this morning. And it's in Christ's name I pray. Amen.